Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from AnthonyMorganti.com. This is episode two of the video series where we're going to talk about printing in Lightroom. In this episode, we're going to talk about soft proofing. Well, what is soft proofing? Well, if I hand you a picture and you're holding a picture in your hand, that's called a hard copy or a proof or a hard proof. It's already printed. We can't do any more processing to that image. In Lightroom, there is a part of Lightroom where you could simulate what your image will look like when it's printed. And then you could make changes to optimize it for print. That's called soft proofing. It's a proof, but it's not printed yet. We could still change it. And it's in the develop module. So if you go to the develop module of Lightroom, and you can see down here in the toolbar, we have soft proofing. If you don't see the toolbar, hit the T key on your keyboard. The T key turns that toolbar on and off. And you could just click right there, or you could hit the S key on your keyboard. It toggles soft proofing off and on. And when you do that, you could see the histogram changed. I'm going to turn it off. You can see it says histogram now. We'll turn soft proofing on. And all of a sudden, it says soft proofing, and the histogram changed slightly. And we have some stuff below it. <clears throat> really, what we're doing here is we're telling Lightroom what type of printer we're using and what type of, type of paper we're using. And Lightroom then will attempt to display on our screen what that print will look like. And the way you tell Lightroom what type of printer and paper you're using is by using an ICC profile. Now, in episode one, I said the number one reason why people are disappointed with their prints is because they're using a non-calibrated monitor. Well, the second most common reason why people are disappointed with their prints is because they really don't understand ICC profiles. All an ICC profile is is a file that you get from either your printer manufacturer or from the paper manufacturer and it tells the printer exactly what settings to use to print to a specific type of paper. Now you can see in this drop down right here it says profile. And you can see I have, I think, six here. I have Bay Viewing. I have two different Epson profiles there. I have two different Hanamule profiles for Hanamule paper. And then I have another Epson uh, profile for uh, Velvet Fine Art paper. These are the papers I most often use, these five. The top one, Bay Viewing, when I don't print my images myself, I send them to Bay Photo Lab. And all the professional photo labs, or at least most of them that I know of, will have an ICC profile available for you to download so that you could get an idea of what your image will look like when they print it. So I downloaded this ICC profile from Bay Photo Lab. And when I want to get an idea of what my image is going to look like if I'm sending it to them, I will use that uh, profile when I soft proof my image. Now, we're going to get into how to download and install ICC profiles more in the next episode when we're actually in the print module. What I could say is normally when you install the drivers, when you get a new printer and you install the drivers and all the software, you'll get a number of uh, ICC profiles installed on your computer along with the printer. If you use a third-party paper, like I use this Hanamule paper, you'd have to go to the Hanamule website and download the exact ICC profile for the exact paper you're using and the printer you own. And it's, you know, all that stuff's free. They don't charge you to download their ICC profiles. Of course, they want you to use their paper. So as, you, as I mentioned, we have these six, and five of them are for printers. We go to other here, and if you don't, have see the ones you have these are all the ones that are installed on my computer but you could see only a select few have the checkbox next to them that's so i don't have to scroll through scroll through all of these to find the paper i'm looking for so if you don't see your paper listed click other and then scroll through this list and then just check it and click ok and then it should show up in this short uh, drop down here now Different papers will render the image differently. In general, now this is very general, a photo paper, usually it's called an RC paper, a resin um, coated paper, that has a wider color gamut, meaning 
more colors can be represented and printed on that paper in general than in a fine art paper, one that's made of cotton, not really made of paper. Um, so those have a smaller color gamut. You can't get as many different shades of colors printed on a fine art paper uh, than you can on a photo paper. Now that's very general, uh, but you know, to give you some guideline. Now, the reason now, we're, let's say we're taking a look at this image here. We have some very vivid, saturated colors. And let's go down to a fine art paper. See this, uh, this one here is a velvet fine art paper. And you can see how the histogram kind of changed. And over here in the top right hand corner, if I hover over that, this, as you can see here in the little uh, tooltip underneath the hand, it says show destination gamut warning. Destination is the SC-P600 printer for that velvet fine art paper. And whatever turned red, that is meaning that what I'm seeing on my screen isn't going to be printed like that because that printer with that paper is not capable of printing that exact shade of color. So that is what we're seeing. Now we go over to the left and it, it looks like a little like computer monitor. If we hover on that, a tooltip will pop up and it says show monitor gamut warning. Well, what happens is when we pick all these different papers down here in the drop down, the screen of our computer is trying to display the colors like they'll be printed. But sometimes our monitors can't show all those colors either. So this is kind of a warning like, yeah, well, we can't you can't see all these colors either on your screen and over here is your printer can't print all these colors so it kind of gives you an idea of what is what now i mentioned that this is for the epson uh, p600 printer with five velvet fine art paper let's go up to the metallic photo glossy paper same printer p600 printer and we'll hover over here and you can see that there's a lot less out of gamut than there was with that velvet fine art paper. But we go over to the monitor and there's a lot less that this monitor that I'm using could really display properly. Now, if your monitor really can't display the colors, you're kind of in a, in a, like a twilight zone type of area here. You don't know what to do. And really it comes down to is you have to do a test print. It comes down all the time. A lot of people hate soft proofing, I should say. I mean, a lot of great photographers I know detest soft proofing and won't use it. They, they, their reasoning is it costs you $2 a dollar to make a print. Just do the print and that's your, your proof right there. If you don't like it, change it. And, and they have a point. So it doesn't cost a lot to make a print uh, if you're printing yourself. Now, on the other hand, if you're sending it off to a lab, and you're going to wait a few days to get it back and you're disappointed when it comes back and it costs a lot more than a dollar or two. So that, you know, is that. So anyways, we could see with this metallic photo paper, at least the printer has more in gamut. Okay, now let's uh, just go through some of the papers here just for, let's go to the Bay Photo Lab. This is their, um, their ICC profile. And in the instructions, they said that the intent should be perceptual. And we're going to talk about intent in a minute. So they say, set your intent to perceptual, and that is their ICC profile. And as I hover, you can see there's very, very little out of gamut. But then my monitor still with this, this image, there's a lot out of gamut that I can't really see the proper color. So when I send this off to get printed, the printer will compensate for this part in red over here and will not print that exactly like it is stored on my computer. But then again, I'm not really seeing the exact colors. So when I get it back, it's going to look considerably different probably. Now I say considerably different only because there's a lot of blue shown here. It really isn't going to be that much perception or per, that much different that we perceive. It's going to try to get the colors as close as possible um, you know, when, when it's trying to show us the image on our screen here. So 
I wouldn't lose a lot of sleep over it. Like, you're going to say, oh my god, this is unprintable, this image. Well, probably not. You're probably going to print it, and it's not going to look that much different. That's usually what happens. So we go there. We have we looked at the um, metallic photoglossy. One of my favorite papers for the Epson printer is this exhibition fiber uh, paper. And you can see there's a little more out of gamut than there was with the photo paper. And then we have the Hana Mule paper. Now I have it for the Canon printer. By the way, both these printers were loaned to me by B&H Photo, and uh, I really like to thank them again for loaning me these uh, printers. Because of that, it's why I'm able to do these videos. So we'll go there, and you can see that with the Hana Mule paper on the Canon, there's very little out of um, gamut there. Now on the Epson, there's almost none out of gamut. Look at that. So the Epson paper with the Hana, Hana Mule uh, paper, this um, it's the Photo Rag Burrita paper. There's very little out of gamut. Then we looked at the Velvet Fine Art, and there was a lot out of gamut because that's a fine art uh, paper. Usually velvet papers have very small um, color spaces to work from. So okay, so that's the uh, the uh, ICC profiles. The other thing. Um, well, let's jump to here. Okay, we have we have this ICC profile. Uh, let's see if we could find one that uh, maybe no, not that one. Bear with me. I want one where I could. Okay, right here. We're going to use this on the Epson P600 on the metallic photo paper. As you could see, we have some stuff out of gamut up here. Well, what do you do when you have something out of gamut? What could you do to fix it? Well, typically what you would do is you would just go down to this HSL Color B&W tab. And what we want to do is we usually go with saturation. You could uh, try luminance and hue, whichever one, you know, try them all, see which one works better. But usually saturation is where you would start. And you want to do a targeted adjustment. So we want to turn on those warnings. And to do that, we'll just click on this little uh, icon right there. And those stay on now. So they're on. We want to do a targeted adjustment. And if you watch my Lightroom series, you know how to do targeted adjustments. We just click on this little tool right here. And our cursor turns into that tool. We're going to go right on this red part. I'm going to click down with my left mouse button. When I do, you're going to the cursor is going to disappear, and you won't know what I'm doing. So I'm clicking down with the left mouse button, and I'm dragging the mouse straight down. And you can see we just keep going down until that goes away. When I let go, it's asking me, do I want to make a virtual copy for soft proofing? The reason why is so you have your originally processed image untouched. You're just going to create a virtual copy, and that's the one that you're going to use for printing. And normally you want to do that so you're not affecting your uh, your actual image. So we're going to write create proof copy. Create proof copy. We're just going to have the proof copy right there. And um, th so there's the original with this part that is out of gamut. Let me turn that off. And here's the one we just adjusted. Turn that off. There we go. So there's the original, and there's the adjusted one. You can see you barely could see the difference. All right, let's go back. Or we're on the uh, proof copy now. All right, and we're going to turn on the gamut warning again. And we have some in the grass. So we still have our our adjustment tool here, and we're just going to go on the red, and we're going to click down and drag down until we get rid of all that red. And there we go. Now we have one that, theoretically, <laughs> if I print this to the Epson P600 printer uh, with the metallic photo paper, it should look pretty much exactly like this. So that is how you would adjust an image that is showing gamut warnings, how to get rid of those gamut warnings. Now, the next thing to talk about is this perceptual relative uh, intent. And a lot of people don't really understand what this means. Well, let's say this really is how your printer deals with images that are saturated that it cannot print. 
with the ink that it has. The ink isn't saturated enough to get those colors. And relative, let's say, okay, let's say you have a dancer and she has a purple dress on and it's, it's saturated purple. And your printer can't print that saturated purple. If you're in, let's say, perceptual, since we're there, what it will do, your printer will do, it will bring down the saturation until it's able to be printed. All right, so that's perceptual. Relative means that it will go to the nearest saturated color that is near that and print that saturated color. Now, usually it's so close, you just, you might not be able to see it that well, the difference I'm talking about. Now, the advantages and disadvantages. Well, the relative saturation or relative intent when you print, if you use that, and let's say she has this purple dress, but there's all these nuances in her dress of shading. Everything is saturated, but she has folds in her dress and there's there's a little difference in shading between the purple that's on like a ridge of the dress and the purple that's behind the hem a little bit of the dress. Well, what happens is when you're using relative, it's going to go to the nearest saturated color that it's able to print. So you're going to lose all those little nuances of shade. It's going to just, it, you risk making it one big purple blob of dress instead of all these little nuances of shade. With the perceptual, it's not going to be as vivid purple anymore. It's going to be less uh, saturated. Usually, most of us and most manufacturers of paper want you to leave everything on perceptual uh, because of that reason. Relative sometimes will really ruin the print because it will get rid of all those nuances, a shade of saturated color that is in something. So perceptual usually works better. Uh, on this image of my dog, I can't remember. I think it was with, yeah, it was with this uh, paper, this um, Hana Mule paper. If you look at perceptual of my dog, Archie, and there wasn't, the black background around him is not done in Photoshop. That was a black background. And this was all done in camera with lighting and, and background. So that black background really isn't uniform black. It's It's got some nuances of shade. Let me show you relative. Go to per, I'm gonna to toggle back and forth. I'm on relative now. There's perceptual, there's relative, there's perceptual, there's relative. Can you see how the background is getting a bit lighter when I'm on perceptual? That's because the black is, it's not really a color, it's black, but it's saturated black. And the uh, P600 printer with this Burrita paper is not capable of printing that uh, saturated black, those all that shade. So it's bringing down the saturation when I'm on perceptual. When I go to relative, it's just going to the nearest shade of black that it's able to um, I shouldn't say shade, I'm, I'm bothered by that. It's going to the nearest black level that it's able to print in a saturated fashion. And this, to me, looks a lot better than that. This looks more washed out. That looks more absolute black. So that's why when I print this image using this paper, I will use relative because it will give me a blacker black basically. So that's where this intent is. So I hope that made sense. Um, now simulate paper and ink. I, uh, personally, I don't think that is very effective. Um, it, it's supposed to give you an idea what the actual, a better idea, what the actual print will look like when you have it printed. In my opinion, it doesn't. All right, that's my opinion. I encourage you to try and reach your own conclusion on that. I do know um, some of the um, paper manufacturers, when they talk about soft proofing, they always say, leave this box unchecked. I've never seen a paper manufacturer say to check this box. So I, I don't think it does exactly what it's supposed to do. 
So that's kind of soft proofing. That's what it is. There's there's not a whole lot to it. It just gives you an idea of what an image will look like once you print it on a specific printer with a specific type of paper. It's kind of hard to explain. I hope I did a good job. Um, and I hope that helps you. Um, now, in part three, we're actually going to be in the print module. And I haven't decided yet if I'm going to split that up into two videos or just one video. But uh, either way, we'll be in the print module in episode three. All right. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.